Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update. The coming correction. I know, I know, I know. It seems impossible. Markets are not reacting to anything but up. We see it week after week after week and every little dip is bought. Yet that also has technical consequences and I want to highlight that a little bit. And I'll make the technical case here for a coming correction. Uh, that then will probably decide whether we're going to make new highs uh, into the end of the year or not. So here we go. First of all, seasonality. Let's face it, on paper, the market is basically just following the seasonality script on the S&P. March low, rip into May, June, and the highs, and then further highs in July. So on that basis, you basically have to acknowledge yeah, we may make even more make more new highs in July that followed by some sort of pullback chop action before ripping into year end. And I think this is basically what you see the folks that are calling for new highs basically following that script. Fair enough, right? If nothing matters, nothing matters. In fact, you can argue ever since the March intervention on the banks, there's not been any corrective move in markets higher. And it's just been basically tracking that and that continues to sit in your highs and that is a form of liquidity so from that perspective maybe it all makes sense from another perspective it doesn't make sense because if you look at the underlying liquidity issues they're actually draining and not only are they draining they've now vastly disconnected in price so you got to make the assumption either that it no longer matters even though it's mattered for years uh, or uh, everybody's a slightly too optimistic here, uh, especially l retail investors that are now piling in here. Morgan Stanley of the view, this is a sell them from my perspective. It is as well. I think these things do matter, but clearly we are currently disconnected and hence we've not seen any reaction to this. The other aspect I keep honing in, in about is the lag effects. As I said, generally 12 to 18 months. Last year, we were at a 1.58% funds rate. So the big hammer is still coming, unless you're now also assuming lag effects no longer matter. However, having said that, as we saw in 2006, 2007, when the Fed was pausing then, uh, that didn't stop markets from making new highs. So it's all a question of the timing and the influence of the debt construct. As you know, it's much higher than it was uh, today than it was in 2006 2007 and we're seeing bankruptcies in u.s companies piling up quite dramatically uh, which so far again have not shown to have a structural effect but these takes time these things take time that's why they're called lag effects and basically the message is the big wall is still coming in terms of the impact on the economy now having said all this you know, sometimes I put out roadmaps, kind of construct, uh, conceptual. This one was, I put one out in the end of February when I put out this Northcast called Decision Time. And the view was, here's this cup and handle, have a um, breakout and then a back test. And then our back test would get bought and then ultimately come to some sort of decision points with the technical target being around 44 50 30 that that area and then we would see some sort of pullback and then the big decision point and let's just follow up on that chart and i haven't really adjusted the big lines at all just kind of highlighting what happened we did have the back test we had the bounce then we had a challenging moment with that banking crisis but as you saw intervention and nothing but up since and in interestingly enough we actually got to this level delayed uh, this level was hit here in June and we had an initial technical reaction uh, and then another one but now we had this move higher last week on the inflation data and it got us right into that previous high so kind of resistance so is this now invalidating my view for a pullback no it's just actually in, in a way strengthens it uh, but it's clear that bulls are currently in full control uh, but the view would still be some sort of pullback and then that decision point whether these lag effects drag the economy down this year or not until next year and you have this race off to new highs by the end of the year so that's kind of the decision point at this point and this resistance here not being the only one uh, we also got very close to the 78.6 fit or rather 0.8 
0.786 fib last week. Uh, and that, I have that pegged around 45.34. As you know, we're in a very steep uptrending channel and very much disconnected from moving averages. And this is where I get into this technical view that suggests a corrective move is coming for at least a reconnect with the 50 MA. Or worse, we'll see. Uh, bottom line is even in bull phases, as we had during post-COVID, you have these regular dings of the 50 MA, which ends up being support a lot of the times and these pullbacks come back from when you have very low vix big disconnect from the moving averages and high readings on the bpsbx that's the bullish percentage indicator and we had that last week we got to 77 so from that perspective it would probably make sense to see that type of pullback to reconnect and then we see right in fact bpsbx if you look at it on the RSI, it's RSI level, it reached 85. That's a really rare reading. We saw that the last, just before the COVID crash, didn't mark a high. What it did though, however, is inform a pullback that then led to new highs on a negative divergence and then COVID was the trigger. We don't have a negative divergence yet, but if you look at all the previous times, BPSPX hit 85 or plus, I can tell you that virtually all of them ended up with a corrective move, not only to the 50 MA, but the 100 MA. Uh, so this is extremely overbought, very rare, and doesn't happen very often at all. As you can see, even here during the crazy bull run that we had, we never got even close to that. So on this indicator, people are very bullish, and these charts are fairly cooked. In fact, if you look at the NDX, you know, last on Friday, we had this push above the daily Bollinger Band, a bit of a reversal there, and that new high came on a daily negative divergence. It's a rare setup as well. We saw that leading up to the highs. And notice here that NDX is very far disconnected from its daily 200 MA. These are type of uh, readings where you get into imbalance problems. Uh, you know, on the downside, we were very far disconnected to the downside on the 200 MA that demanded a reconnect as we almost got in, in August. And so this is imbalance at this point and is also suggestive that there is risk for a corrective move to come. And if you look at some of the individual high flyers that have been driving this market, they're also very far disconnected. Apple's not as high as it was here during the 21 peak, but it's running a really tight channel. Earnings coming early August. You know, as long as nothing breaks, it can run higher, I suppose. But it's also this type of channel where once it does break, unless it sustains forever, uh, you run a, you're running a risk of quick uh, snap back to the 50 MA as well. And if that's bad, look at Meta. It's over 40% above its 200 MA, so talk about imbalance there. Um, new highs on a negative divergence. Again, as long as nothing breaks, it can keep cranking, but this is tight, so you're risking that something breaks in during earnings or uh, approaching weaker seasonality, that type of situation. And then, of course, everyone's darling these days, NVIDIA, over 60% above its 200 MA precedence for that zero new highs all on negative divergences so that's these are all red flags and notice a lot of these charts have big open holes in them and here's another little factor to consider and that's gaps open gaps art cash and famously once said, said all gaps fill if ever and there's certainly precedence for some gaps to remain open for a long time. But the amount of open gaps here that have been building on this rally is a bit too rich for my taste to believe that none of them will fill. In fact, on Friday, we had an eighth open gap up uh, that then did fill. And the uh, risk is obviously that you're going to get some gap fill moves here in the next um, four to eight weeks. And this could be quite violent, right? I mean, this, this is the type of thing that acts, tends to act as a magnet when the time comes. So principally, my view is, you know, we've pre approached a critical resistance zone here with the 78.6 FIB. If the seasonality chart plays, maybe it'll squeeze a little higher. Uh, but that's all risky and dangerous stuff in terms of the gaps, the disconnects, the divergences, and the overbought readings. And they're indicative that we will see some sort of corrective move um, coming here into July, August. 
And then I think, my, per my original chart, then, then we're going to see the response. You know, my expectation would be that the initial correction, however big it is, i.e. 50 MA or 100 MA or what have you, will get bought for a bounce. And then as we enter these, this lag effect period, we're going to have to continue assessing the data uh, in terms of how this can unfold, uh, whether it just goes straight to new highs or whether we're actually going to see a recession unfolding into Q4, all to be determined. So how we're noodling through this? Well, we've been trying to sell um, in vain so far because there's not been really any volatility in this move. But we also keep playing long plays every week, either the Dow or the Russell. Those have been working nicely. But it's in low volatility environments, always a bit challenging to navigate through this, no doubt about it. If you want to join us on the journey, you're welcome to do so via the website, northmantrader.com, daily market brief, life action alerts, or market videos. Hope that's all helpful. Let's see what happens here in this earnings season. This week is OPEX, which tends to want to compress the VIX again even further for futures rollover we've got retail sales we've got some earnings coming in and we need to gauge the reactions and how they sustain these moves that we've seen in recent months hope that's helpful you guys take care